Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, my name is Professor Avinash Dadich. I am the Dean of Institute of Legal Studies and Research, GLA University, Mathura. Dear student, we all know that we make money to take care of our family, take, to take care of ourselves. At the same time, we are also living in a socially welfare state. Socially welfare state means that the government is taking care of so many things like the police, hospitals, roads, you know, you name any public utility that is maintained and developed by the government. So that part is very important for our individual life as well as for the company's life, okay. Because until and unless we have an ecosystem where public infrastructure, public services are not good. The no businessman, no individual can survive and grow in any society. Okay. And how government uh, gets all that money to do the social welfare, suppose giving money to the poor people or creating a uh, bridge or hospital, uh, having the army, you know, all these public welfare things you can see. The government gets the debt money from the tax station. Okay. So the tax is very important for any economy. But at the same time, uh, to understand the tax law is very important for any uh, business student or any business leader that how tax laws are happening in, in this country and what are the rules and regulations. Because if you violate any tax law, that is a civil as well as criminal offense and the government of India and the state governments can take action against you. Because as I told you that they require this money to run their day to day business. Uh, when I say business means the uh, welfare business, you know, they want to do good for the citizens. So they need that money through the taxes. Okay. At the same time, as a law abiding citizen, when you are making some money, we have the legal and moral responsibility to pay taxes to our government. So tax is a very, very historical thing. It's not a new thing that only right now we are paying taxes. Historically, since thousands of years, people uh, have been paying taxes. Uh, to the government and this is how government is giving them all services. So today we will learn about the tax law, the direct taxes. What is a tax? Tax is a fee charged by a government on a product, income or activity. There are two types of taxes, direct taxes and indirect taxes. If tax is levied directly on the income or wealth of a person, then it is a direct tax like the income tax or wealth tax. Okay. Directly it is uh, connected with your income or your wealth. If tax is levied on the price of a good or service, then it is called indirect taxes like the excise duty, goods or service tax or the GST. In the case of indirect tax, the person paying the tax passes on the incidence to another person. Okay. So, we, so there are two types of taxes, direct and indirect. And Tax is basically a fee that government is charging to us because people are making uh, some money, they are having some income, some means that taxable income and then people are doing lot of services that is why government is charging. Need to levy taxes, government levies taxes as a means to raise revenue from its citizens in order to pay for various operating expenses, you know there are various socially welfare operating expenses, even the day to day salary of the government employees is paid through the taxes like suppose if I say army, you know there are we have more than 1.2 million it means like 12 lakh people in Indian army. So their salaries are being paid by the taxes. Okay. So you name any public utility, any public service that money is coming through the taxes. The collections are made uh, the, the collections so made are used by the government in developing infrastructure, keeping a standing army, providing healthcare facilities for its citizens 
interest pay payment on the debt. So, government is ge getting a lot of loans from the World Bank, IMF. So, they have to pay interest also and they need to repay that loan also. So, that money comes from our taxes. Taxes are imposed in form of personal taxes, corporate taxes, sales, uh, sales taxes, property taxes. So, there are so many taxes imposed by the state government uh, at the district level, at the, cent uh, at the headquarter level in the state and national level. Constitutional power for levy of taxes. Article 246 of Indian constitution distribute legislative powers including taxation between the parliament of India and state legislatures. Okay. Central government has been empowered by entry 82 of the union list 1 of the schedule 7 of the constitution of India to levy taxes on all income other than agriculture income. So, agriculture is being exempted from the income tax and it is collected by the central government. Taxes are compulsory payments for which there is no quid pro quo. Like you know if you pay taxes you cannot expect anything from government directly. Whatever they are doing that is for the society at large like there is nothing special for you like for example if you say that I am paying 1 lakh rupees as a tax to the government, then government should give me something in return. No, government gives something in return, but not specific to the taxpayer, but to the everyone. When they build a road, then anybody can use that road. If they build a bridge, then anybody can use that bridge. If they build a hospital, anybody can use it. So, they do not discriminate between the taxpayer and non-taxpayer. Okay. Income tax. Income tax structure. The structure of income tax law, Income Tax Act 1961, Income Tax Rule 1962, circulars, notifications and instructions issued by the income tax authorities and explanatory memorandum annual financial act again by the government of India and the income tax authorities and judicial precedents legal decisions of the court. So, income tax appellate tribunal, high court and supreme court they are also making lot of rules, regulations and uh, they are interpreting the income tax law, uh, circulars, notifications. So, they are also a big source of the uh, understanding the tax law. Okay. So, if you want to learn about the income tax law in India, then these are the sources. Source of income tax law, income tax act the first. The levy of income taxes in, in India is governed by the income tax act 1961. This act came into force on 1st April 1962. The act contains 298 sections and 14 schedules. These undergo change every year with additions and deletions brought about by the finance act passed by the parliament. In pursuance of the power given by the income tax act, rules have been framed to facilitate proper administration of the income tax act. Okay. Then there is an annual financial act. Every year the finance minister of government of India presents the budget to the parliament. So, during the budget government of India declares changes in the income tax law. Part A of the budget speech contains the proposed policies of the government of India in the fiscal year. Part B of the budget speech contains the detailed tax proposals. And in order to implement the above proposals, the finance bill is introduced in the parliament. Once the finance bill is approved by the parliament and gets the assent of the president, it becomes the finance act. So, every year when you see the budget bill, you need to understand that part A talks only about the policies like the, the, what government wants to do in the next one year, what are their financial objectives, what are the schemes they want to introduce how much money they will spend on those schemes. So, they explain the entire financial plan and part B talks about the detailed uh, tax proposals. So, the part A is more about expenses that how we are going to expend, uh, you know, spend our money and part B talks about that how we are going to get that money. Okay. Then income tax rules 1962. The administration of direct tax is looked by the central board of direct taxes CBDT. Okay. The CBDT is empowered to make rules for carrying out the purpose of the purposes of the act. For the proper administration of the income tax act, the CBDT frames rules from time to time 
These rules are collectively called Income Tax Rule 1962. It is important to keep in mind that along with the Income Tax Act, these rules should be also studied. So, they are also just like laws, you know. If you need to understand in any law in our country, the parliament makes the act. They say that, okay, this is the law, this is the act. But when someone has to implement that act into reality, then the duty goes to an administrative agency. Here in this case, CBDT, Central Board of Directors is. So, CBDT, just like, you know, lump sum, it is the apex body to implement tax laws in our country. It is comprised with the all senior IRS officers, Indian Revenue Service officers uh, from the income tax division. Okay? So, those people at very senior level, they make policies, rules and regulations within the boundaries of the act. So, the act says that we have to achieve X thing. So, whatever is allowed under the act, they make rules and regulations and if they, if they are facing any practical difficulties, they try to solve those practical difficulties through the uh, rules, circulations and notifications. Circulars are issued by the Central Board of Direct Taxes CBGT from time to time to deal with certain specific problems and clarify doubts regarding the scope and meaning of the provisions. So, suppose if there is a doubt or any confusion in the market that what does it mean this new law like the new budget you know has introduced a new provision in the tax law, what is the you know meaning of this uh, particular provision. So, ultimately government and the citizens and the corporates they want clarity and that clarity will come not from the parliament because parliament cannot. Uh, amend the law all the time. Suppose in one particular amendment in the parliament, they have introduced five uh, different provisions. So, if people are confused, if there is any, uh, uh, you know, not clarity, then parliament, parliament obviously is not meeting all the time, okay. They are meeting at very, uh, in, they have a special time like in a year, they try to meet three to four times. But during that period, uh, the CBDT issues circulars and notifications to remove any confusion or doubts in the people's mind. These circulars are issued for the guidance of the officers and the assessors. The department is bound by the circulars, while such circulars are not binding the assessees, they can take advantage of the beneficial circulars. Income Tax Act key chapters. The so, first is section 123, applicability of the act and definitions. The chapter 2, basis of charge, section 4 to 9, charge of the income tax, scope of the income tax, determination of the residential status and concept of income accrual. Chapter 3, income, incomes which do not part of the total income. Section 10 talks about the exemptions like the charitable trust. Chapter 4 talks about the computation of total income the most important chapter because here we are calculating that uh, what is my tax liability, 5 heads of income, computation of income under each head. Then chapter 6, aggregation of the income and set off of carry forward or loss, unexplained income, money, investment, expenditure, set off provisions, carry forward and set off provisions. Chapter 6a deals with deduction to be made in computing total income, section 80a and 80u, deduction in respect of certain payments, deduction in respect of certain incomes. Then double taxation relief, uh, chapter 9, section 90 to 91, provisions for relief under tax treaties with foreign countries. Suppose if you are doing an international business you can claim double taxation relief like you know you do not want to pay taxes in more than uh, one country because you know your income is uh, same. So, you do not want to pay taxes suppose you are doing business in India and France you do not want to pay taxes to both countries. So, you have to decide as per the law that which country will get taxes from you. In that scenario uh, if you want to get any relief you can apply this section. Special provisions relating to avoidance of tax. Section 90 to 92 to 94A, Transact transfer pricing provisions, transactions with personal located in notified jurisdiction areas. Then chapter uh, 12, it talks about determination of taxes in certain specific areas, section 110 to 
section 115 BBE taxing on long term or short term capital gains or induction provisions. Then chapter 14 talks about procedure for assessment section 139 to section 158 return of in uh, income income assessment time limits for assessment. Then chapter 17 talks about the collection and recovery of taxes section 192 section 234e it talks about tds tcs advance payment interest and chapter 19b advance ruling chapter uh, it uh, the section are covered under this uh, chapter are section 254 and to section, section 245v applicable it deals with the applicability of the taxes procedures to the taxes and the power of the uh, income tax authorities and appeals and revisions. If you are not happy with the income tax authorities decision like the uh, income tax assessors or commissioner of income tax then where you can go for the appeal. So, appeal and revision provisions are under section 246 to section 269 and it talks about appeal before CIT commissioner of income tax appeals, ITAT income tax authority tribunal, high court and supreme court. And finally, it talks about revision of orders under section 263 and 264. So, basis of charges of income tax, like what are the basic rules on that basis uh, government is charging or assessing the income tax. Charge of income tax on the total income of every person. So, income tax law is very, very individual, it is not a collective thing the government will charge income only only on your income it is not the family income your kids income parents income your friends income it is only your income the rate of income tax is specified either in the act or in the relevant finance act so you can easily understand that a rate of income tax is keep changing every year so whatever rate is applicable on that particular financial year will apply on you previous year and assessment year concept followed Okay. Total income is computed in the manner prescribed in the act. Scope of total income depends on the residential status as well as the nature of the income. We will talk all about these things. Certain incomes are deemed to be sourced in India even if earned or received outside of India. Section 4 of the act is a charging section. It provides that total or total income of previous year of every person shall be charged to income tax as prescribed rate. The scope of total income as governed by section 5 of the act is based on the residential status of a person. In respect of income chargeable into income tax, tax shall be deducted at the source or paid in advance where it is so deductible or payable under any provision of the act. So, suppose like if you are a working professional and if you are getting any individual or separate income, then the 10 percent deduction or the TDS will be deducted at the source of income. Okay. Then the remaining amount will be calculated on the uh, income slab, but some part of the income will be deducted at the source of income. Income is taxable under the act based on residential status of the taxpayer and place of accrual or receipt of the income. Heads of the income. The first and important thing is salary, you know for salaried people the, the most uh, important part is salary. Salary it includes any remuneration or benefits provided by the employer. It is not only your basic salary, but HRA or some incentive, some bonus or anything which comes under the salary bracket. If you see your payment sheet, then you can see there are different heads within the salary and all those headings will be calculated as a income. So, if someone is giving you suppose a special incentive or bonus that will also be considered as a salary. Income from house property, any rental or lease income earned from the residential or commercial property. Capital gains, any gains lost on the sale of any capital assets. If you are investing in share market, if you are making any money through or you are losing any money through the capital gains that will that will fall under this category. Income from business and profession, income earned from any business, profession or vocation. Income from other sources, any other income not classified under the heads above like investment income, interest, dividend, 
they will fall under this head. So income tax law recognizes only five heads and all incomes will fall under only these heads. Income from salaries, basics, employer-employee relationship to exist, okay. In income as a salary will only be considered when you are the employee of a company or employee of an organization. If you are not the employee, if you are a consultant, then salary will not be applicable on you, then you will fall under the vocation or the business. So, this is applicable only when you are the employee of the any employer. Only salary is defined in section 17 taxable under the head. Salary is defined to include wages, allowances, prerequisites or profit in lieu of salary. Salary taxable on the due or received whichever is earlier. For residents global salary income taxable. For non-resident, only salary received, accruing or deemed to be accrued or arise in India is taxable. Okay, if someone is not living in India for the, or for the entire year, whatever time he is spending in India, that time the salary he received that will be taxable. General exceptions like the leave travel expenses (LTA) that is exempted from the income tax because you are not getting that money until you are spending that money. Same thing with the house rent allowances that is also exempted because you are not getting that money in your pocket. You are spending that money, you know, you are giving rent to someone. Then convenience allowances if they are giving any money for the convenience like the 2000, 3000, 5000 to come and go from office that is again not coming to your pocket. So, there are few exceptions under the income tax law. Income from house property annual value of the property consisting of building or lands a uh, appointment there too of which SSC is the owner is the taxable. Property occupied for the business or profession purposes excluded. Okay. If you occupy any property for business or profession that will not be a taxable. Annual value reasonable rent or actual rent if the it exceeds reasonable rent or in case of vacant property actual rent received. Okay. Deduction 30 percent of the annual value interest on borrowed capital, okay. self occupied property annual value taken as a nil, no deduction of 30 percent available, interest deduction up to 12, 2 lakhs. Income from business or profession that is very important because you need to understand only like 5 to 7 percent people are following under the category of salaried people, you know most of the people are following under the category of business or profession. Business means any trade, commerce or manufacture or any adventure or concern in the nature of trade, commerce or manufacture. Profession includes any vocation also, okay. if you are doing some vocational things like carpenter, electrician that will also fall under the uh, profession. General principle. Business should be carried on during the previous year. Business should be carried only by the SSC. If taxable under a specific head, it cannot be taxed as a business income like dividend income, rent of house property. Computation of the business income, net basis of taxation, taxable income less admissible expenditure. So, here see net income will be detected on your profit. Suppose in your business if you are making 1 crore rupees but your expenses are more than 1 crore then there will be no taxable income and obviously if there is no taxable income then there will be no tax on you. Income from capital gains, transfer of capital assets other than the personal effect during the previous year, certain trans, uh, transactions are not regarded as transfer long term versus short term capital assets this is very important. Deductions uh, like for example, in some cases if you are keeping that uh, asset for more than 5 years then if you transfer that capital asset that will not be taxable. Same thing in the gold like if you are buying the gold and after 5 or 7 years if you are selling the gold through the gold bond that not will be uh, taxable. Expenditure in connection with the transfer, cost of acquisition, cost of improvement, indexation benefits of residents. Forex fluctuation benefits for non-residents. Okay. Income from other sources, Re residuary head of income, illustrative leads, dividends if you are getting any dividends out of your shares that will fall under the income. Income from lottery, 
horse race like in some places where the lottery and gambling gambling is allowed so if you make any money out of gambling or other you know lottery or anything that is also income interest from bank deposits if you are making more than 10000 rupees per year from your fds or any bank deposit then about 10000 rupees income will be considered as a income family pension you know if you are getting any pension from the government or from your family that will also considered as a uh, family pension insurance commission if you are working as an insurance agent and if you are getting any commission that will fall under this source deductions expenditure laid out wholly and exclusively for the purpose of making or earning the income suppose like the income uh, insurance commission if you say that you are the insurance agent and in a in the previous year your commission was suppose like 20 lakh rupees for example hypothetical so to make that 20 lakhs rupees uh, commission you have spent maybe 10 lakh 15 lakhs to run your business to run your office hire more people you know, transportation marketing branding so that money will be deducted and remaining amount will be only taxable no deduction if the income does not form part of total income no deduction for personal expenses and capital expenditure hierarchy of tax authorities you need to understand under section 116 they talked about the hierarchy of the income tax officers so the lowest officer is the inspector like obviously there are tax assistant also but they are not the officer so inspector then income tax officer itos then assistant commissioner or assistant director then above that deputy commissioner deputy director then joint commissioner joint director then additional commissioner and additional directors then commissioners and commissioner appeals and directors and above that chief commissioners and director generals and finally cbdt okay so this is the hierarchy of the tax authorities so you need to understand that all these authorities are having some special power as per their level so suppose what assistant commissioner can do maybe not inspector can do so as per their structure as per their hierarchy they enjoy some powers assessment uh, is defined under section 2 sub clause 8 so there are two types of assessment one is regular assessment and other is reassessment under section 147 so in the regular assessment security assessment under uh, scrutiny assessment under section 134.3 sub clause 3 and best judgment assessment under section 144. Appellate uh, remedies suppose if you are not happy with the uh, decision of the income tax officers you know like income tax commissioner or this uh, chief commissioner then what can you do. So you are the aggrieved SAC you are not happy so then you can go to the first level that is the CIT. Uh, Agasting the assessing officer's order so like assistant commissioner deputy commissioner joint commissioner uh, additional commissioners you know they are making a lot of orders against you like in in the terms of assessment then the first appellate body is the commissioner of income tax appeal okay so that officer you can go and appeal uh, against the order passed by the junior officer if you are not happy with the order of the cit appeal then you can go to uh, ITAT income tax appellate tribunal okay so that's a final fact finding authority so that is again a tribunal where they are dealing only with the income tax issues and they are hearing appeals against the order of CIT appeals then if you are not happy with ITAT then you can go to the high court the relevant high court the third level uh, in high court they will talk about the question of law if there is a uh, illegal or uh, not the prop appropriate interpretation of law then high court can also intervene and finally if you are not happy with the high court order you can go to the supreme court and finally the supreme court will decide what is right and wrong other remedies administrative remedies so revision uh, uh, rectification of mistake apparent from record so if you believe that there is some uh, mistake happened on the record some data some information some name then you can appeal uh, you can go to the department under section 154 and they will rectify those mistakes revision under section 263 if you believe that 
uh, that officer has taken a wrong decision, you can go for the revision also. Application to CBDT under section 119 to B. So, if you are not happy with something in the department, you can make the application even to CBDT and revision sought by SSE under section 264. Constitutional remedies, high court, uh, if you believe that your fundamental rights have been violated by the income tax authorities or if they are making any rule or regulation which is against the fundamental rights of the constitution then you can approach to high court under article 226, 227 and 228 of the constitution and supreme court to under article 12, 132, 133 and 136 of the Indian constitution. So, after the income tax act now we will move to goods and service tax. So, now after the income tax or direct taxes, now we will look into the indirect taxes, goods and services tax. Journey to GST and structure, now we all heard about GST very much, so we need to understand how we move from the normal indirect taxes to the GST. Why constitutional amendment was required? The constitution provides for clear division of powers in respect of taxation between state and central. Earlier as per the constitution of India, the central government was not having the right to tax sales of goods except in the case of interstate sales and states were not having the right to levy taxes on services. The constitutional amendment was required to be amended to provide for powers to both the central and states as per the respect of GST as a single tax on goods and services. So, earlier what was the situation that the states and central they were all imposing their own taxes. There were a lot of inconsistency between uh, many states. So, uh, people were paying somehow more and there was more uncertainty for business houses also. So, now GST is a way where they have created a ecosystem where everybody knows that what is the GST on this particular product or service and that is given only once you know like if you move from one state to another state the tax uh, slave or tax rate will not change. So, 101st constitutional amendment was brought pursuant to which draft GST was released in public domain on November 2016 with a four tire rate structure agreed by GST council. Okay. CVD and special CVD in custom duty, excise duty, central sales tax, service tax, entry tax and uh, electricity tax, entertainment tax, lux luxury tax, VAT. So, all these things now they move to GST under the GST, CGST, SCGST, UTGST and IGST. We will see individually. GST, charges and scope of GST charges of GST, GST is designed as a comprehensive lev levy on goods and services, GST is destination uh, based taxation, charges of tax under GST is on supply of goods and services by a taxable person or for the specified categories of receipt for a consideration. Scope of GST, GST extend to whole of India including the Jammu, Jammu and Kashmir. India has been in defined to include territorial waters, continu continental shelf, exclusive economic zone or any other merit maritime zone. <coughs> what is GST? It is a destination based tax on con uh, consumer con consumption of goods and services. It is to be levied at all stages with credit or tax paid at the previous stages available as set off, only value add addition will be taxed and burden of tax is on the brown by the fin uh, final consumer. So, intra-state supplies falls under the CGST and SGST uh, and inter-state supplier falls under the IGST. Who will be taxed? All goods and services exceptions in, they are there, imports and exports are zero rate. Who will be taxed? All manufacturers traders, dealers, importers, exporters and service providers, small businesses, traders below a threshold are exempted, principal, agents, broker and auctioneer. GST credit mechanism, this is very unique and very new system in India. 
जी एस टी क्रेडिट मैकेनिज्म एज पर द जी एस टी मॉडल लॉ सो इनपुट सी जी एस टी आउटपुट सी जी एस टी एंड आउटपुट आई जी एस टी सेम थिंग इन इनपुट आउटपुट इनपुट आउटपुट सो यू कैन से वेरी क्लियरली डेट दिस इज ए फाइनली डेस्टिनेशन टाइप ऑफ टैक्सेज वेर द फाइनल कंज्यूमर विल पे टैक्सेज टू दी गवर्नमेंट सी जी एस टी नॉट क्रेडिटेबल अगेंस्ट एस जी एस टी एंड एस जी एस टी नॉट क्रेडिटेबल अगेंस्ट सी जी एस टी इनपुट एस जी एस टी ऑफ वन स्टेट नॉट अवेलेबल अगेंस्ट आउटपुट सी जी एस टी ऑफ एनदर स्टेट इनपुट जी एस टी इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ सर्विस रिसीव्ड अलाउ टू बी डायरेक्ट डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड टू अदर स्टेट अंडर द इनपुट सर्विस डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर मैकेनिज्म एंटी प्रॉफिटरिंग ओवर व्यू एंड अपडेट एंटी प्रॉफिटरिंग प्रोवाइजेज फॉर्म पार्ट ऑफ सी जी एस जी एस टी लॉ इनेक्टेड इन इंडिया द मेन पर्पज ऑफ इंसर्टिंग लॉ रिलेटिंग टू एंटी प्रॉफिटरिंग इज टू एंश्योर दैट द सप्लायर पासिज ऑन द बेनिफिट ऑफ इंक्रीज क्रेडिट और रिडक्शन इन स्टेट टू द रिसिपेंट ऑस्ट्रेलियन एंड मलेशियंस आर रिसेंट ऑफ द क्लोजेस्ट इंटरनेशनल एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एंटी प्रॉफिटरिंग मेजर्स ए नंबर ऑफ स्टेप्स हैव रिसेंटली taken by the government of india to formalize the anti profiteering provisions like anti profiteering rules and approval of national anti profiteering authority format of filing anti profiteering application released by cbec the government has clearly indicated the seriousness of implementation of anti profiteering provisions some prominent examples are the gst council has formed a selection committee to identify eligible persons to appointed for the national anti profiteering authority press release suggesting telecom players to reduce prices and pass on the benefits to the consumers a list of goods and services have been released with reduced tax liabilities under gst regime in comparison to present combined indirect taxes so the idea is that if they are paying less taxes now under the gst they must transfer that benefit to the consumer so earlier before the gst suppose the tax liability was uh, 25% now under the gst now they are supposed to pay only 18% so remaining 7% they cannot keep that profit with themselves they must deliver they must transfer that benefit to the consumer so and uh, you can see clearly see that the government of india's policy is very clear that if we are giving some benefits to the companies in terms of consolidation of the taxes lower rate of taxes the company should transfer those profits to the consumer like for example in telecom sector the government recently issued a, a suggestion and recommendation to telecom companies that now you are paying less taxes you know compared to the previous tax regime because there were so many taxes and you were there were multiple layer of taxes now there is a uniform taxes so you are paying less taxes so please transfer that benefit to in uh, the consumer so they have established a national anti profiting authority also so if you have any concern like if you believe that uh, a company is not transferring the benefits to the consumer you know because uh, due to their greed now they are paying less taxes compared to the previous taxes they must transfer at least those profits to consumer litigation the same thing adjudicating body in in the indirect taxes then appellate uh, uh, revisionary authority state area bench of appellate tribunal then high court and supreme court in indirect taxes again they are the irs officers indian revenue service officers but from the Uh, customs and indirect taxes okay so in uh, irs officer they are mainly direct taxes and indirect taxes so they are clearly divided so here again uh, like you can see the clear hierarchy is there and if you are not happy with their gst orders you can go up to supreme court gst council so most of the decisions are not most like all decisions regarding the gst is taken by the gst council so gst council the co- constitution of the gst council is chairman is the union finance minister the vice chairman to be chosen among the ministers of state government member is member uh, minister of state finance and all ministers of finance or taxation of each state quorum is 50% of the total members 
states uh, they have two third weightage and central is one third weightage and decision by 75 percent of the majority. Council to take recommendations on everything relating to GST including laws, rules and rates. So, GST council is very important organization right now and they are taking all the important decisions to understand the GST and implement the GST. Now, there is a another aspect that is the custom duty. Background and relevant legislature entry 83 of in, uh, union list in the 7th schedule of the constitution empowered central government to levy the custom duty. Custom duty is le levied generally on all goods imported into India and few goods exported from India. The levy and the rates of custom duty is governed by the custom act 1962 read with the custom tariff act 1975. Further certain rules and regulations have also been issued. A rational for levy, regulation of imports and export, protection of domestic industry in India and collection of revenue. Suppose if we are importing so many things from outside of India like it happened in the in, from the China especially when they are dumping their products at a very lower rate and if there is no tariff duty or custom duty on them then the local industry will not survive. So, to maintain uh, the balance uh, with the export and import, we use tariff duty and custom duty. Custom duty pre and post GST, taxes in pre GST regime, basic custom duty, additional duty of customs, special additional duty of customs, anti dumping duty, safeguard duty, countervailing duty, protective duty, export duty. Tax substitute post GST now additional duty and all these taxes are not applicable now additional duty of customs special additional duty of customs anti dumping duty safeguard duty and countervailing duty and protective duty taxes not uh, still they are in the force basic custom duty education says on imported goods secondary and higher education says on imported goods and export duty computation of uh, customs duty uh, you can see very clearly accessible value of the important duty and uh, then there are different levels like the basic duty is 10 percent, education says is 2 percent, secondary education says is 1 percent, integrated goods and service tax is 18 percent okay? and total custom duty is almost like 30 percent. Okay? Taxable event under customs defined under section 12 charging section duty to be levied at such rates as may be prescribed under the custom duty. Only goods imported in India or exported from India, they are, they are falling under this category. Taxable event in case of imports, ambiguity existed in regard completion to the import and uh, <coughs> this, this is fine. Import procedures, once the details are captured in the system in EDI enabled ports, the same are reflected in the BOE generated towards the end of the transaction circle. So, this is how imports and uh, processors import taxes are calculated in India. Carrier of goods files import manifest and finally, importers to pay uh, duty of port trust demurrage if applicable and clear the goods. So, from like you can see this is the clear chain of events where a things comes to India from part A to part B. Export procedures, same thing, submit shipping bills for export to custom authorities, also submit invoice, packing list, contracts and everything. And from there, uh, you get the clearance of goods for export, you know. So, this is like a complete list where you pay your taxes, you deposit your documents and then you are allowed to uh, export. Foreign trade policy, that is very important under the tax law. Foreign trade policy provides the development and regulation of foreign trade by facilitating imports into and argument, uh, argumenting exports from India. DGFT is responsible for implementing the foreign trade policy. There are different schemes under the FTP for merchant exporters, service exporters, for duty free importers or input or capital goods which are in the nature of duty exemptions or Remission can be availed by eligible persons subject to certain conditions. Okay. So, we have a foreign trade policy also. Relevant legal provisions under the custom law is the Customs Act 1962, Custom Tariff Acts 1975. 
and there are some uh, rules and regulations time to time the custom authorities issues like the custom valuation determination of price of imported goods rules 2007 and uh, the purpose of this rule was valuation of imported goods for calculating duty okay so you will find that there are uh, so many rules coming from the import duty and the same thing so what I was trying to explain through this uh, presentation that in our country, especially for business houses, we have tax, uh, different level of taxes. For individuals, taxes are following under the category of income tax. If they are making some income, income again is divided into five heads and uh, the salaried people and uh, businessmen or the people who are running their own things, okay, the entrepreneurs or anything. So, that is part of the income tax law. Then if we talk about the indirect tax law, then there is a GST and well as well as the custom duty. So the GST is levied on the movable goods, you know, when things are moving from one place to another uh, state. So now in India, we have a unified uh, tax, indirect tax provisions and that is decided by the GST council. So as I said, the GST council is the highest body in India headed by the finance minister, union finance minister of our country and all members are coming from the state finance minister. So, it is not the that only Delhi is deciding everything, all states are participating, they are debating and finally, they are agreeing on one particular uh, tax slab on one particular good. So, like suppose if you name anything, now you can go and visit the GST council and you can identify that how much GST is liable on this particular product. Okay. So, this is very important in the GST and the another provision which is very relevant for you and for the businesses that if they are paying less taxes due to GST and if they are making some extra profit. So, that profit must be transferred to the people, to the consumer, they cannot keep that profit with themselves. This is happening right now, lot of industries are making millions and billions because of the GST and they are not transferring those profits to consumer. So, that is why the government of India has created a national anti-profiting authority also. Okay. So, if you have any complaint, you can reach out to national anti-profiting authority also. And the third part is custom duty. The custom duties are imposed on the imports and export in India. The main objective of custom duty is to regulate the foreign trade. And the foreign trade obviously it is very important. We want to increase our exports and decrease our imports. Okay. I, I think that is the standard international trade policy. But at the same time, we cannot restrict imports. Okay. So, what we want? that we should import only those things which is very much required in our country. If someone is trying to destroy the Indian market, the government of India through the international and uh, national trade policy, they can impose more custom duty and taxes okay, on that particular import. Okay. And sometimes they want to disgrace some export also. Suppose for a particular good, our country needs it within our country. And maybe there is more demand outside of India, but government of India wants to restrict the exports also sometime. So, maybe they can impose some more duties, more taxes on exports. So, people do not go for the export and that particular goods will be used in the India only. So, what I'm try, I was trying to explain that please try to understand tax law, direct uh, income tax law, GST tax law, custom and I know they are very complicated with the help of CA and expert people, uh, you can understand it better. But as a business students, you must have basic understanding of the tax structure in India, tax authorities in India, how they work, what are their powers and if you are not happy with their decisions, where you can go for appeal. So, I think this type of basic understanding will help you to design a better tax strategy for your personal life as well as for your professional life. Thank you very much. Thank you.